Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to be learning how to send emails with Python. So we've sent emails in previous videos, but in this video, we're going to look at this more in depth and see how to use best practices. And we're also going to look at how to do more advanced emails, such as adding attachments or sending HTML messages. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, you're going to want to have an email account to send emails. In this video, we're going to be using Gmail, which most of you are likely familiar with, uh, but you can use any email service that you'd like. But the setup might be slightly different from this video if you're using a different service. Now we're also going to see how we can use your local host to send uh, test emails if you don't have an actual email address set up yet. Uh, but for now, let's look at some stuff that we need to do to get an account ready. Uh, so for example, if you're using Gmail, then there are a couple of settings that you need to change in order to send emails through Python using this account. So let me pull these up in my browser. So one is this uh, myaccount.google.com forward slash less secure apps. So first, if you don't have two-factor authentication set up, then you're going to need to allow less secure applications like Python to connect to your account. And you can do that at this URL here. And I'll have links to these pages in the description section below uh, if you want to access these URLs. Now, if you do have two-factor authentication, which I would always recommend, then instead you'll need to create an app password uh, so that you can connect through Python. And you will do that at this URL here, myaccount.google.com forward slash app passwords. So you can see that I have an app password here called Python test, and this is what I use to connect to my account. Now I've placed that password into an environment variable so that I never need to add it directly into a Python script. I think it's a good habit to never add your sensitive information directly to your script, but instead you should use configuration files that don't get committed to source control or use environment variables. So if you've never used environment variables to hide information like this, then I do have a separate video that shows how to do that for Mac, Linux, and Windows. So I'll leave a link to those videos in the description section below if anyone would like to see how that's done. Okay, so once you've got an email account and you have your security settings in order, uh, let's see how we can send some emails. So I have an empty Python script pulled up here in Sublime Text. And you can create an empty script in the editor of your choice. Uh, now, just one tip, if you're writing a script to test these things, uh, then don't call your script email.py because that will conflict with the module built in to the standard library. So I have mine called mail-demo.py. Okay, so first let's connect to the mail server. Now there are two different classes that we can use to do this, and both of those are going to be imported from the SMTP lib module. So I'll just import that entire module. So I'll say import SMTP lib. So first I'm gonna go ahead and connect using plain old SMTP. So I'm gonna use a context manager here, and using a context manager will make sure that our connection is closed automatically without us needing to do it manually. So I'm just gonna say with SMTP lib dot SMTP. So we're using the SMTP class there. And now we'll put in the mail server that we want to use. If you're using Gmail, then this will be SMTP dot Gmail dot com. So make sure that's spelled correctly. Um, and now we're going to uh, put in the port number that we want to connect to. And if you're using plain old SMTP, then that's going to be 587. And now we can give this connection a variable name, and I'm just going to call this SMTP. And now within this with statement, we're going to say SMTP.ehlo. And the EHLO method just identifies ourselves with the mail server that we're using. And I think this is uh, actually gets called automatically in the background anyways, but just in case, I'm going to go ahead and run this explicitly here. And now we want to encrypt our traffic. So to encrypt our traffic, we can say smtp.starttls, okay? And now that we've encrypted the traffic, we need to rerun the EHLO method again to re-identify ourselves as an encrypted connection. So I'm just going to copy this here and paste this in to run that again. And now that we're encrypted, uh, we can go ahead and log in to our mail server. So I'm going to say smtp.login. 
And now we can put in, oh, sorry, that's going to be a method. And now we can put in our email address and password that we want to log in with. Now you can put this directly into the script. But remember, I said that I think it's a good idea to get into the habit of putting sensitive information into environment variables. So that's where I currently have mine. So at the top of my script, I'm going to go ahead and grab these environment variables. So I can do that with the OS module. So above SMTP here, I'm going to import OS. And now here at the top of the file, I'm going to create some variables using these environment variables. So the first one I'm going to call email address, and I'll set this equal to, and to grab environment variables in Python, we can say os.environ.get. And I called my environment variable email underscore uh, user. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the password. So I'll call this one email password. And I called this environment variable email underscore pass. So now I'm going to log in to the Gmail server using those credentials. So I'm going to copy my email address. And that is the first argument that we pass in to login. And we pass in the password as the second argument. Okay, so now that should log us in to our mail server. Now, in my case, I have two factor authentication. So the email address is just simply my email address. And the password here is the app password that I created through that app passwords page that I showed you earlier in the video. Okay, so now let's create a simple message. So we're going to uh, see more organized ways to create messages in just a bit with other modules. But if we want to create a simple message without importing anything else, then we can do that. So let's go ahead and do that first. So first, I'm going to create a subject for our message. So I'll say subject is equal to, and I'll just say uh, grab dinner this weekend. And now I'll put in a body. So for the body, uh, I'll say how about dinner at 6 p.m. this Saturday. Okay, and now I can combine these into a single message. Now, when you're constructing a plain text email from scratch, you need to add the subject as a header and then have a couple of blank lines and then put the body of the message. So I'm going to do this using an F string. So I'm going to say MSG is equal to, and now I'm going to create an F string. So we'll put an F there. And now we need to put the subject as a header. So I'll say subject and then put in our subject there. And now we need a couple of blank lines. And now we can put in the body of our message. Now I know that that looks a little strange uh, and it's a weird way to format a message, but we are gonna see more convenient ways to do this later in the video. But if you're gonna do it without any additional modules, then you have to do it this way. Now, if you've never used F strings before, then you can use regular string formatting there as well. Uh, but basically you just need your subject, those two new lines, and then your body. Okay, so now we can send this simple plain text email. So to do this, I can just say SMTP dot send mail. And now the format that we are going to use for this is going to be the sender, then the receiver, and then the message. So for the sender, we want the sender to be the email address that we logged in as. Uh, for the receiver, I'm actually going to send this to myself, so I could put email address here as well. But just to kind of differentiate these two, I'll just put my email address in manually to make it look like I'm sending it to someone else. So my email address is coriumshafer at gmail.com. Okay. Now, if you're testing this on your machine, then, uh, you know, I'd appreciate it if you didn't set my email address as the receiving address there. Uh, I don't mind getting questions and messages from you all, uh, but if you're just going to be using this for a test, uh, then, you know, I'd rather not be bombarded with a lot of those test emails. Uh, so, you know, if you don't mind, please change that to your own address for testing purposes. Um, okay, so for sending simple plain text emails, then it's just as simple as this. So if I save this, then we can see if I scroll up here, we've done this in 20 lines of code. So now I can go ahead and run this. And we didn't have any output, so that's fine. We didn't print anything. Uh, but if I go back to my browser here, then if I pull up my email here, then we can see that I got my message, so that's good. Um, now, you're, if you're doing a lot of testing and don't actually want to send yourself an email each time, uh, then you can use a local debug server to test this. So next, we're going to take a look at how to do that. Um, but 
quickly just to make sure that this all looks well. Let me open this up. So that's our subject looks good. Our body looks good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And now, like I was saying, now let's go ahead and take a look at how to use a local debug server uh, to test these emails if you don't actually want to send yourself a bunch of emails. So in order to do this, I'm going to open up the terminal here. So I'll open up a new terminal. Let me uh, resize my terminal here. And I'm just going to minimize this browser here in uh, the background. Okay, so we can start a debug mail server on our local host by saying Python 3. If you're on Windows or if you're in a virtual environment, uh, then that might just be Python. I'm on a Mac, so I have to say Python 3 when I'm in my global environment. So I'll say Python 3-M SMTPD. So not just SMTP or SMTP lib, but SMTPD. Uh, and then dash C, and this will be debugging server, all one word with uh, those capitalizations there. And now dash N, localhost, and then we will run this on, you know, port uh, 1025. So if I run that, then that will now listen for emails on our local machine. And when it gets it, it will just print it out here to the terminal and then discard it. So let's go back to our code and send an email to this debug server. So I'm going to open up Sublime. And to do this, I'm going to close our current output. Now I'm just going to comment out the current SMTP connection that we have with Google and just create a different one. So I'm going to copy this and comment out the current one and just paste in another one here underneath it. And instead of connecting to the Google Mail server, I'm just going to connect to localhost on port uh, 1025. So instead of Gmail here, I'm just going to say localhost, and that's going to be on port uh, 1025. Okay. And with the debug server, we're not going to be able to start TLS or log in. So I'm just going to comment out those lines as well. So I'm going to comment out those. And now all we have is our message creation uh, and the send mail. So now if I run this code, then again, we don't have any output. But if I go back to the terminal, uh, then we can see that that message was printed out to our terminal instead of actually sending an email. Uh, so that's a way that we can test these messages if we don't want to keep sending emails to ourselves. Okay, so I'm going to go back now and undo those changes. And I'm just going to go back to sending real emails for uh, the purpose of this video. So I'm going to shut down the terminal here and go back and just undo all of those changes that I made and save that. Okay, so now let's take a look and see how we can make this a bit easier on ourselves and how we can send more complex messages. So first of all, uh, I feel like this part here at the top of our context manager is a bit weird where we are, um, you know, sending the EHLO, then the start TLS and then the EHLO again. Now, if we wanted to, then we could just use the SMTP SSL class to have an SSL connection from the very beginning, and then we won't have to run these other commands. So to do this, instead of using the SMTP class, I'm going to use SMTP underscore SSL. And when you use an SSL connection, that instead of this being on port 587, we're now going to use port 465. And now we can remove these other lines here. So I'm just going to remove these other lines here. And now we're just simply logging in and sending our message. So if I save this and go back to my browser here, then we can see that that still works too. I still got that new email. Okay, so the other thing that's a bit weird back in our code, let me uh, delete that test email so that we're sure that we're working with a clean slate. Let me go back to the code. Okay, so another thing that is a bit weird is the formatting that we're using with our message. It's not really intuitive that we have our subject and then the two blank lines and then our body. So let's see a better way to do this. So I'm going to make another import here at the top and I'm going to import a class called email message and that is from email dot message uh, import and this is email whoops email message. So this is an email message class. And 
now we can use this email message to set these things a bit more cleanly. And we don't even need to create this message inside of our with statement. So let's instead build this up at the top of our file here, and then just use our with statement to log in and send the message. So up here underneath our email address and password, I'm going to create a new email message. So I'm going to say message is equal to email message. And now instead of creating these different parts of the message separately and then combining them, I'm instead just going to set these on our message object itself. And I'm also going to add the sender and receiver to the message object also. So we can simply say, so I will copy this here. And now to set the subject, we can just set the subject directly like this. So I will copy our old subject here and paste it in. And now I'll get rid of that subject line. And now I'm also going to put the sender and receiver inside the message itself. So to set the sender and receiver, this is going to be a from right here. So we can set the from uh, to our email address and we can set the message and access this to key there and we're going to set the to to be to Corey M Schaefer at gmail.com okay and now we can actually set the content of our message which is going to be our body so I can say msg dot set underscore content and now we can pass in the content of our message so I'm just going to copy the same one that we had before. And now I can get rid of our body down here. I can get rid of our message down here. And also when we uh, send mail, instead of uh, using the send mail method, since we're no longer uh, using the sender and receiver within this, uh, instead we're gonna use the send message method because all we're doing is sending a message. So I'm gonna get rid of those and just have the message there. And this is going to be send underscore message. Okay, so I think that this organizes the information for our message a little bit better. So now we have it all in one place. And not only that, but this is also going to let us put together some more complicated messages as well with us doing it this way. But if we were to run this right now, then we should still just get that same plain text email that we got before. So I'm going to save this and run it. And now if I check my browser here, and if I check my email, then we can see that we got that same plain text message that we got before. So that's still working. Okay, so now let me go back to our code. Okay, so now we're using this new email message object uh, to send our message. So now let's see how we can add some attachments to this email. So I have some pictures of my dog when he was a puppy saved in the same directory as this script. So let's say that I wanted to add those uh, as an email attachment. So first, I'll just attach one image, and then we'll see how to do two after we send the one. So first, I'm gonna change the subject of uh, subject and the body of our message here. So I'll just say, uh, check out Bronx as a puppy. And then for the content here, I will just let them know that there's an image attached. So I'll just say imaged attached here. Okay, so now below set content here, I'm going to open that file that I want to attach. So to open this file, I can just say with open. And this file is in the same directory as my current script that I'm running. So I don't have to set a full path or anything, but you would set the full path to the image that you want to attach. And this image for me is called bronx1.jpg. So I'm going to open that as in RB mode, which is read bytes. And I will just call this F. So now within here, I can read that image data. So I'll say file data is equal to f dot read. And now we can attach this to our message. But before we attach this, we're gonna to need to be able to determine what kind of image we're attaching. So if we're just doing one image, then we could put this in manually. But if you're doing multiple images, then you're likely gonna want Python to determine this for us. And there's a built-in module that can do this for us. And that's the image HDR module. So to import this, I'm gonna go up here to the top and I'm going to import, oops, import. And this is IMG HDR, okay? And I'm just going to copy that module name here uh, so that I don't spell it incorrectly. 
And now to get the type of image that this is within our with statement down here where we have this uh, image file open, I'm going to say file underscore type is equal to uh, IMG HDR dot what this is a dot what method. And now we can just pass in that that name of that file. So I'm going to say F dot name. So we're passing in the name of the file. Now you could also change that up a bit in order to get the image type by reading in the image bytes. But in this case, I think it's just easier to do it with the file name. So just to show you what this does, if I comment out everything underneath this, so I'm not going to send an email right now. Um, now I'm just going to print out this file type and see what Python gives us here. So if I run this, then we can see that the output that we got that it returns JPEG. So that worked because it is a JPEG image. Okay, so now let's attach our image to our message. So I'm going to remove this print statement here where we printed out that file type. I'm going to uncomment out everything here. Let me uh, just get that up there, okay. Okay, so now that we've set that file data and that file type, uh, now below that with statement, uh, and outside of the with statement, we're back on the main level of our code here. I'm going to say msg dot add underscore attachment. And what we want to add is that file data, whoops, file data. And now we want to say main type is equal to, and this is an image. And it also needs a subtype. So I'm going to say subtype is equal to, and that is what kind of image it is. So I want to pass in file type as the subtype. Okay, so that should attach that image. Now we also want uh, the name of the image for our attachment. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that too. Um, so up here underneath file type, I'm just gonna say file name is equal to f.name. So let me pass this in as well. So another argument to add attachment, I'm gonna say file name is equal to uh, file name. Now I named my variable file underscore name and the uh, uh, argument here is just file name one word. So keep that in mind if you're following along. Okay, so that should add our image as an attachment to our email. So if I spelled everything correctly, if I save that and run it, so we don't have any output, but if I go back to our browser here, and check this. Now this might take a second because we're sending an image instead of plain text. Okay, so we can see that that just came in. Uh, so if I check this, then we can see that we have our subject as checkout Brox as a puppy. Our body is image attached. And if I open this, then we have the image that we attached to the email. And if I check the name of this image, if I just hover over this, then it also got the image name of that file as well. So this is bronx1.jpg. Okay, so let's go back to our script. Okay, so now that we've attached one image, uh, let's see what we do in order to attach multiple images. So you can simply create a loop while making these attachments in order to do this. So above the with statement, I'm going to say files are equal to, and I'm gonna create a list of file names here. And these are gonna be the list of file names that I want to attach to my email. So one is gonna be bronx1.jpg. Uh, the other one is just called bronx underscore two dot JPEG. And now I'm going to say for file in files. And now I'm going to indent this with statement here so that we're getting this information for both files. Now I'm also going to indent my uh, message dot add attachment into our for loop so that we're attaching both of these. And also we need to change the file name uh, that we are opening. So right now we're just opening this bronx1.jpg, we want to just open file. So when it loops through this, we're going to open bronx1.jpg, uh, read in that data, get the file type, get the file name, and attach that to our message. And then it's going to move on to bronx2.jpg, uh, get the file data, file type, file name, and then add that as an attachment to our message. So if I save that and run it, then this one will probably take even longer to uh, uh, come in now. But if I check the browser, then let me go back to my inbox. And it looks like this came in here. So now we have two attachments. So we have bronx1.jpg, and that came in with the right file name. And we have bronx2.jpg, and that came in with the correct file name as well. So now I'm going to delete both of these just to clean that up a bit. Go back to my code. 
Okay, so attaching both of those images to our email worked well. Uh, now, if you're attaching some other kind of file, then you just need to change the main type and the subtype for each one. Uh, so I also have a PDF on my, or in the same directory as uh, my script here. So if I wanted to send something like a PDF, then I could go ahead and do something like this. So I'm just gonna keep my for loop here. Uh, but for the files up here, I'm just gonna make this a list of one file. And I called this resume.pdf. So uh, now that's going to loop through here. It's just gonna loop through once because there's one PDF file. It's gonna open it, read in the data, uh, read in, we don't need the file type anymore because it's not an image. So now we can just have the file data and the file name. And now for the, uh, when we add the attachment, uh, what we're gonna do here as the main type is we're gonna say application. And for the subtype, I'm going to put in a string here, and this is gonna be octet dash string. So make sure you can see both of those there. Now by setting the application as the main type and octet stream as the subtype, that's what the Python documentation calls a generic bag of bits type. So uh, basically just generic information for that. So if I save that and run it, then let's go back to the browser here and let's see if we got this message and we did. I forgot to change the uh, subject here from uh, check out Bronx as a puppy, but if we look at the resume, then we can see that we do have this resume.pdf here, and we do have that PDF file, so that worked well. Okay, so now let's look at a couple more tips here that you might find useful when sending emails. So first, let's say that you want to send emails to multiple people, that's fairly common. Now, in order to do that, it's as simple as passing in a list uh, where we currently have the receiver. Um, so let me make a list here. So I'm gonna go up here, uh, to the top. Now above my message here, I'm just going to create a list and call this contacts and set this equal to, and I will set this equal to my email address. And then you can pass in what other email address uh, that you want to send this to. So test at example.com or something like that. And now when you do the message to, we could pass in that list of contacts. Now, when I was making this video, I tested this with my email and the email of a friend of mine, and it worked well. Uh, it did send emails to both of us, but this isn't how they have it in the Python documentation. So I'm not sure if this is frowned on for any reason, but in the documentation, they have it where uh, they are passing in a string of comma separated values. So I could do this manually by adding a string with both of these email addresses comma separated, or if we wanted to create a comma separated string uh, from this list, then we could do that simply by saying, um, we could do a comma there as a string and then say dot, oops, dot join. And we want to join that contacts list. Now, I know that looks a little confusing there if you've never used it. If you've never seen a join statement like that, then you can watch my video on lists for more details on how that works. Um, so those are some ways of how you'd add multiple recipients to an email. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna set this back uh, to send this just to myself. So I will just put back in my email address here instead of using those contacts. Okay, so the last thing that I'm gonna show here in this video is how to send an email with HTML. So this is common for newsletters and things like that where you wanna spice it up a bit and have a better presentation than just plain text email. So in this email that I'm gonna send, I'm gonna have HTML and plain text as an alternative uh, because some people turn off HTML emails. Uh, so you wanna have that text as a fallback. So I'm just going to delete the part where I added the attachments here. So I'm going to delete all the way down from the files to the attachments. Now for the message.set content, I'm just gonna have this be the plain text. So within here, I'm just going to say, uh, this is a plain, whoops, plain text email. And now to set the HTML message, I'm gonna use a small HTML snippet that I have open up here in Sublime uh, that just has a simple heading that is styled with a color. So I have that open here. 
And if you want to use this simple HTML to test this out for yourself, then I'll be sure to add that to my GitHub and leave a link to that in the description section below if you would like to use this as well. So I'm just going to copy this email here and now go back to the script. And now let's add that email to our, or let's add that HTML to our email. Um, so to do this, I can simply say msg dot add underscore alternative. And now within add alternative, I'm going to uh, put triple quotes here. Oops, let me uh, do double quotes here. So triple quotes, which means it's going to be a multi-line string. And I'm going to put a uh, backslash there to cancel out that new line. And now I'm just going to paste in that HTML. And now, so we, this is kind of large here, but when we add alternative, this entire string here is our first argument to add alternative. And now I'm going to put in a comma to add in one more argument. And that argument is going to be subtype. So that subtype is going to be equal to HTML. Okay, so by adding that HTML as our alternative there and setting that subtype, now if I save this and run it, then let me go back to my email here and I will go back to my inbox. And again, I forgot to change this subject line, but if I click on this, then we can see that we got that HTML email and that the text has a uh, H1 heading style with this bluish gray color. Uh, so that HTML is working. So that's good. Okay, so now let's go back to my script and let me see if we can fit, I don't think we can fit all of this on uh, one screen here, um, but if you need to see this, hopefully you can see everything to create that message right there. And I'll be sure to put this finished script on my GitHub as well and leave a link to that in the description section below if anyone would like to see this finished script. Um, okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully now you have a pretty good idea for how you can send just about any type of email uh, that you'd want to send with Python. But if anyone does have any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also also, it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon, and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos, and thank you all for watching.